Start again. As most of y'all have noticed, the siding is going up, the roof is on. Uh, we won't have our meeting this week, and the next week we will have it on Thursday. Um, I won't be <clears throat> in town that Wednesday, so we'll have it Thursday, and we'll re-announce that next week. If you're able, please stand and join me as we have a call to worship, followed by our opening hymn and prayer, and it will be hymn number 340. Come ye sinners, rent your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God. In Christ's grace, our hearts are cleansed and our lives are made whole. pray. O God, your glory is always to have mercy. Be gracious to all who have gone away from your ways, and bring them again with patient heart and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, forever and ever. Amen. Things of her. 
Please be seated. Our first reading is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 26 through chapter 12, verse 13. When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. After the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing David had done displeased the Lord. The Lord said to Nathan, sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very, a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb he had brought. He raised it, and it grew up with him and his children. It shared his fruit, food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord live, the man who did this must die. He must pay for that lamb four times over, because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hands of Saul. I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Amorites. Now therefore, the sword will never depart from your house because you despise me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. This is what the Lord says. Out of your own household, I am going to bring calamity on you. And he will sleep. Sorry. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you. And he will sleep with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret. But I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, You will not die because of this sin. Please join me as we read Psalm 51, found on page 785 of the Methodist Hymnal. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, mercy. blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned, and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. Behold, you desired truth, in the inward being. Therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear the joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Uh, Yep, we're stopping. Our second reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 16. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of your calling. The calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly realm? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God, the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Hymn number 622, first through fourth stanza. There is a fountain. Till all the ransomed church of God be 
The gospel reading this morning is taken from John chapter 6, verse 24 through 35. Once the crowd realized that Jesus, that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Copernicum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I perform, but because you ate of the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they ask him, what must we do? To do the works God requires. Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, He gave bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who had given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whosoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whosoever believes in me will never thirst. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we read some very interesting passages. The two that goes together naturally is from 2 Samuel and Psalm 51. We pick up the rest of the story from last week where David was supposed to go in the spring time to war. And instead of going to war, he sent Joab and the men of Israel and Judah to fight. And while he was loafing around at the temple one hot day, he saw Bathsheba. And instead of putting it out of his mind, he recognized that she was beautiful and sent for her. And we know the story how he covered up. Bathsheba became pregnant and so he sent for Uriah. Uriah did not go to his house so he sent a note with Uriah to be killed. And we pick up the story today where it says, When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she moaned for him. And the scripture said, after the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing David did had displeased the Lord. In other words, David had it all. He was king. If you were following the story up to this point, he had sent for the Ark of the Covenant. He had it brought into Jerusalem. God was blessing him. All his enemies were subdued. He didn't even have to go out to fight anymore. He could just send his men. And instead, David committed adultery and then he'd committed murder. And after that, he thought he could 
cover it all up. But the scripture said, but the thing David had done what? Displeased the Lord. And so the Lord sent Nathan the prophet to David. And I always wondered when I first read this, why didn't Nathan just tell David, hey, you sinned? Instead, he told his story. And then I realized that just like David tried to cover up having first committed adultery and then trying to cover it up by having Uriah come back, he could have covered up and had what? Nathan killed. He covered up his sin of adultery and then he covered it up even further by having Uriah killed. And then he took Bathsheba to become his wife and she bore him a son. So Nathan told a story about a certain man, a rich man and a poor man. And we, we know the story. We heard that the rich man had all this cattle and sheep, but the poor man had one small ewe lamb. And a traveler came, and the rich man, instead of taking one of his own, took the ewe lamb from this poor man and gave it to the traveler. And David blurted out after he heard this story with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord live, the man who did this must die. Little did David know that the very sentence that he was proclaiming was against who? Himself. And he goes on and said, He must pay for this lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. And then Nathan finally confronted him and said, You are this man. This is what the God said. I gave you all this. I brought you this. I, I saved you from Saul. I, and yet you committed this sin. David did not die. As a matter of fact, we read on. And the, the reason why David did not die is in verse 13. Where David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan the prophet said, you will not die, but there were still what? Consequences for your sin. And th that is an important lesson that we continually need to hear. Because we are Christians and we are saved and God is with us, does that mean that we do no wrong? Or do we have sin in our lives? I don't know about you, but I sin. And I too have to admit like David, I have sinned against the Lord. And David then wrote this psalm, which we call Psalm 51. And when I first read it again, I scratched my head. I could admit, you know... Uh, David sinned against the Lord. He did this evil thing. But I, I would continue and say he sinned against Uriah, had him killed. He killed, sinned against Bathsheba. He had adultery with her. He sinned against his people. As a matter of fact, I could name a lot of people that David sinned against. But here in this psalm, David writes in verse 4, Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And I had to scratch my head and say, how could David said he only sinned against God? For you and I know that sin is not just between us and God. But David understood something very important that we need to understand. That sin first and foremost is against who? It's against God. God wants to be in relationship with us. And whenever we sin... It's against God, and that relationship is broken. And whenever we break that relationship with God, there are what? Consequences. We might not die, but there are consequences. And, and we see David was the one who named his consequences. He first said, that man will surely die, and he have to pay what? Four times over. We didn't get to read the rest of the story today. But David did pay four times over. In a few verses, the son that Bathsheba bore, what? Died. His son Ammon 
raped his sister. And his brother, Absalom, killed him. And then Absalom led a, led a revolt. And then he died. And, and the very thing that Nathan the prophet said, Because you killed Uriah, the sword shall never depart from your house. And on and on. Sin has what? Consequences. And we need to be mindful of it. And the first and foremost consequences that sin does in our lives is that it separates us from God. The second thing we need to talk about with sin, we actually sin with against what? Fellow human beings. I remember when I was a little kid, I have five older brothers and one that's a little older and I used to get in fights all the time. And it usually start, he hit me and I hit him back what? Harder. You know, he, usually it could start out with just a little what? Tap. He hit me, I hit him harder, he hit back harder, I hit back harder. Next thing you know, we are in what? A fight. I don't know how many of us are still so childish. Somebody do something against us as an adult. They sin against us and we do what? We retaliate. One sin lead to another and to another. Isn't that what happened to David? One sin led to another. First he saw Bathsheba, then he committed adultery, and then he tried to cover it up by having Uriah there. Then he sent him off and had him murder. And then after the murder, he took. But the good news is David showed us that he admitted. He, verse 13 said, Then David said to Nathan, I have what? Sinned against the Lord. Whenever we sin, we need to realize the broken relationships. And the first relationship that is broken is the relationship between us and God. And we need to, like David said, against you and you alone have I sinned and have done what is evil, what is wrong in your sight. So that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. We read quite clearly in the Bible that sin leads to what? Death. The wages of sin is what? Death. But that scripture goes on, but the gift of God. And that's what David realized. Nathan pointed out to him, you will not die, but you still have to suffer some of the consequences. And so David wrote these words in Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. And I see even back in the Old Testament, David understood something that we understand very well. That God does indeed have what? Mercy upon you and me. Because if we were left to our sins, we would make it. And that God is a God of steadfast love. God is a God of what? Love and mercy. As, as a matter of fact, he goes on and David said, You have abundant mercy. And I'm glad God have abundant mercy because I, probably like you, sin what? Not once, not twice, but quite often. But the scriptures say, If we sin, I really think it should read, When we sin. God is faithful and just and what? will forgive us if we confess. And that's why David was spared. He realized he was a sinner and he confessed, I have sinned against the Lord. And he wrote and asked God for mercy. Have mercy upon me according to your said laugh. Look, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Verse 3 of Psalm 51 reads, For I know my transgression." And my sin is ever before me. The reality is we know when we are wrong, don't we? I know when I do wrong. I worked in the prison. I could tell you inmates knew when they were wrong. But some of them would never admit that they were guilty. They never came to the point of saying, I, am wrong. I, I did something wrong. We are sinners. But we have to come to that point where we, we what? Admit. Like Nathan, David had to do to Nathan and say, yeah, I, I did it. I have sinned against the Lord. 
I have broken the relationship between me and God. And I've not only done that because sin is not only against God, but sin is also against our fellow human being. And we break the relationship between our fellow human being. Like that childhood fight of mine, one hit lead to the other, to the other, and the next thing you know, we're what? How many of us are still in broken relationship over something trivial from years ago? Because of sin, we're carrying those baggage. The good news for us is God does indeed forgive us, and it's called what? Forgiveness, and grace, and mercy, and love. That's what God offers to us, the church. But I think that sin is not only against God and against others, but when we sin, we break relationship with ourselves. How many of us can ask God for forgiveness, but because of sin, we do not forgive who? Ourselves. And so, whenever we sin, we need to not only ask God for forgiveness and the other person for forgiveness, but we also need to forgive ourselves. Because the reality, we are human beings. We have heard it, to err is human, but to forgive is divine. We are human. We often err. We often sin. So David writes, verse 5, Behold, I was born into iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. You desire truth in my inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom. We do need God to teach us because we are sinners by nature. I know I am. And so we have to accept God's grace, God's love, God's forgiveness. But when it comes to sin, when we sin, we want grace and love and forgiveness. But the question is, when somebody else sins against us, do we forgive them? Are we gracious? We pray the prayer every week, the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us as what? We forgive others. Sin separate us from God from others, from self. But as mature Christians, and that's what Paul is writing about, that you should be mature Christians because there's only one church, one faith, one God. But too many of us are doing the, you started it or, you know, he hit me harder so I have to hit him back. And one sin leading to another. And Paul, in writing to the Ephesian church, says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Unfortunately, some of us are not living up to that call. And God has to remind us and urge us to live a, wor a life worthy of our calling. And remember that there's only one church, one God, one baptism, one Lord. And that we should not be infants but mature and deal with our sin problem. Ask God for forgiveness and forgive. That's what Jesus was talking about to ask him for bread that is what? Eternal. He is the bread of life. And whosoever believes in him should not perish. I could belay the problem of sin even more. But we all know that we need to turn to God. For he is the one who helps us to deal with the sin problem. The word of the Lord. Please stand and join me in our affirmation of faith. There is one God, the Father. All things come from Him, and we belong to Him. And there is one Lord, Jesus Christ. All things exist through Him, and we live through Him. Amen. Please be seated.
This week, the church, we will be praying for the Republic of Congo, Gabon, Sao Tome, and Principe. Are there any other prayer requests? This week, because of communion, we will pray. We will have unison prayer of confession and then silent prayer because we'll do the Lord's Prayer during communion. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Loving God, like David, we realize that we are sinners, that we have sinned against you and have broken your law. But like David, we throw ourselves upon your grace, your love, your forgiveness, your mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. We thank you for your love, your steadfast love, your abundant love. That when we sin, we are able to confess and turn to you. And today we ask for your grace and forgiveness and we confess we are sinners. Lord, we also ask that you be with your church. May we as your church be mature Christian, living up to that worthy life that you have called us to live. We ask that you be with us as we partake today communion, reminding us that we are remembering our Lord, our Savior, the true bread of life that comes from heaven. Father, we thank you. Be with our church as we continue to build a building where we will worship you in the near future. Bless us in all that we give and do to further your work. We are reminded that it is not our church, it is your church that we are building. And that the important part, the church, is the people. May we build up each other in Christian love and grace and forgiveness and acceptance. Father, we pray for those who passed away, for the Nass family, for the black family that died in the fire. Father, you already know all the different prayer requests, even those that we did not voice. We ask that you be with those. And Lord, we ask that you be with our country, our leaders, especially during these difficult days. And Father, now we join together in unison prayer of confession, praying, merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for this day's offering, as forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God.
prepare for the communion today, all are welcome to the Lord's table. Please join me in our communion hymn, Let Us Break Bread Together, hymn number 599. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remains steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join, and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captive and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, 
with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we are all partakers of the one loaf. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. I invite you to come as we share the body and blood of Christ. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ, give me see. Thank you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Christ given for you. The body of 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 Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Get Josh. The body of Christ. Christ. 
Christ giving for you. And a cup of Christ giving for you. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourselves to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Please join me in our post-communion hymn, Bread of Life. Oh, I'm wrong page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 365, first and third stanza, Grace Greater Than Our Sins. benediction followed by the chorus again go forth in peace the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all amen
next day.